Hello friends, welcome to this investment banking tutorial from Wall Street Mojo. In this short introductory program on investment banking overview, you will learn about what are the key roles and responsibilities of different functions within an investment bank. Say for example, what is research? What is sales and trading division? How do banks actually help in terms of raising capital for various companies? What are these jargons all about? What is underwriting? What is market making? And uh, let's say why investment banking m and activities are the core and heart and soul of uh, investment banking division. And uh, we'll also try to answer questions regarding what is restructuring and reorganization and how banks actually help in terms of doing that. So as you may have understood that, uh, you know, I was referring investment banks and banks as as one term. Now, these two things are kind of very confused a lot. Uh, reason being that, you know, commercial banks have a different work altogether as well as, you know, when we talk about investment banking, they are kind of very different from each other. So the first thing that let us uh, kind of understand is what is a commercial bank and how a commercial bank differs from investment bank. Let us now look at what is a commercial bank. Now commercial banks are in fact uh, referred to sometimes as retail banks. Okay. And uh, an example of a commercial bank or a retail bank could be something like Barclays, uh, JP Morgan Chase Bank, then uh, uh, we can also include HSBC and there would be a whole list of you know commercial banks but the primary question here is that what is a commercial bank and what is their responsibilities how do they earn money so uh, let me put it this way in a very very crude way uh, let's assume that this is a commercial bank and you know there are two different set of parties which are involved uh, think of you and me uh, you know, when we have excess cash, you know, we kind of deposit that money in, in the bank. So we are essentially depositors, right? A bank is a place where they collect money from various depositors. So depositors can be in the form of individuals or uh, they can be corporates as well or business guys. So essentially what we are saying is that the bank actually collects dollars from these depositors. So what does depositors get in return? Uh, one is that the the money which has been deposited is safe and second what they earn is something called an interest rate. So let's call this as interest on deposit. So let's say if you have uh, deposited hundred dollars and the interest rate is five percent the bank at the end of one year will pay you not only dollar hundred which is your initial amount but in your account you'll also see a dollar five which is corresponding to the interest payment so you'll have dollar hundred and five at the end of one year if you deposit hundred dollars in the bank now this is on one side where bank actually sources money the second is basically where they deploy the set of money so uh, think about you know loans loans in the form of uh, you know home mortgage loans uh, you know there could be individuals who would like to have car loans you know it could be personal loans it could be any other format of loans so uh, this may uh, uh, be with respect to the individuals but uh, we may also see uh, uh, some parts of loans which are given to corporates so what we are essentially saying is that uh, bank actually collects money from the depositors and gives them gives to those guys who are in need of money so uh, and what do they charge so what is the benefit of the bank here the benefit of the bank is that they earn again interest which we will call that as let's assume uh, on loans and uh, you know this is their interest income and this is their interest expense so uh, the bank actually earns money by ensuring that the interest on loans that they earn is greater than the interest on the deposits that they give so this is an interest income and on the other side this is an expense so if a bank is able to manage this the bank will be profitable so traditionally the banks have been doing this kind of a business where they are giving loans and uh, you know this is something like a low risk kind of a business uh, and it's called as commercial or a retail bank 
So with this understanding of a commercial bank, let us now move forward. So let us now look at what is investment banking. First and foremost, please note that investment banking is different from traditional or commercial banking, which we have earlier referred to. So investment bankings do not take you know, deposits like the way a traditional bank does, uh, neither do they actually pay or act like a guarantee for safekeeping the money of the depositors. So investment banks do not do that. So let's see what investment banks actually do. So to understand investment banking better, let me give you an analogy with respect to a property broker. Now who is a property broker? Let's assume that on one side there are buyers, buyers of apartment and then on the other side there are sellers of the apartment. So there are buyers as well as sellers of the apartment. Now uh, obviously they would like to transact and uh, make this market happen. Now on one side when the buyers who are individual buyers are uh, seeking the sellers, you know sometimes or in fact many a times it becomes very difficult for the buyers to do all the due diligence with respect to the apartment or uh, maybe Maybe you know uh, uh, look at the financial considerations and negotiate them so and in addition the important thing is even searching is also a problem for them so what happens is that uh, these buyers may actually get in touch with people called property brokers now these property brokers will do a couple of tasks you know they would identify how many sellers are there in the region you know they would communicate and uh, kind of make a checklist on uh, the legalities associated with the uh, apartment they will do the complete due diligence you know what are the financial considerations and the search and depending on uh, the requirement of the buyer they would kind of suggest the properties so uh, a property broker is someone in between who is doing all these tasks now how do these property brokers normally make money this is through commissions that they earn and commissions are primarily on successful transactions so let's say if a buyer has uh, bought a flat uh, from a seller at a dollar 10 million so a certain percentage will actually be uh, uh, a part of the uh, uh, property broker as commissions or fees so I mean uh, this is how a property broker functions now having understood uh, in very literal sense uh, how a property broker functions now think about uh, our investment banker I'll call an investment banker as a financial broker so instead of property broker I'm calling this as financial broker what his job is essentially is to make the buyers on one side and the sellers meet somehow now I'll just uh, quickly change the definition of buyers and sellers in this context because I'm talking about investment banking here now think about company okay instead of uh, a buyer or a seller I'll, I'm talking about a company now this company let's say this company's name is ABC and they want to raise funds raise funds meaning that you know they they have a requirement of uh, raising funds because they are going to invest and expand largely from uh, from a very small city to you know they want to have a global uh, presence altogether so for that they require funds so uh, obviously there are two approaches to uh, doing that one is that they can approach a bank and second is that they can raise equity from the market and we call that as an IPO so doing an initial public offering you know they can raise money from the market so let's assume that uh, they don't want to uh, uh, go to the bank for raising further funds so uh, the option that they are evaluating is uh, through equity dilution so what they mean is they are ready to give a share of their company to uh, certain investors who would be willing to do that via uh, initial public offering now if the company ABC may want to kind of go ahead and do this initial public offering they will find it really tough because a couple of things would happen there are legalities associated with it then uh, if you talk about you know how to be aware of the processes you know they may not even know that third at what valuations you know all these things they may not be actually equipped to do that so what they essentially do is that you know they contact someone called an investment banker and the role of the investment banker is to do all these tasks to get 
uh, check at the legal options you know look at the processes uh, talk about the valuations and what this broker does is that he identifies all the set of investors for this IPO so S would mean investors here in this case and uh, the investment bankers are, are sophisticated financial brokers in fact they are connected with the investors and they help these set of companies raise funds and they all understand the checklist of you know raising through an IPO so this was a small example where you know investors are on one side and the company is on the other side so how do the investment bankers earn money investment bankers earn money by commissions like the way you know the, uh, the the property brokers used to earn these guys actually earn commissions on the amount of funds that are raised for this company ABC so uh, this is how investment banks actually earn money so this is one of the ways you know uh, the the other set of examples could be related to uh, mergers and acquisitions so uh, let's say there's a company called ABC and they want to merge with another company called DEF now uh, the problem with these two set of companies would be that they may not uh, be equipped enough to handle all the regulatory aspects of uh, uh, the merger as well as uh, come to the uh, appropriate uh, calculations in terms of valuations or prepare financial models so what investment banking firm does is they come in between and advise on the possibilities of the merger why it should happen what are the possible synergies and uh, in fact uh, the key uh, critical aspects of uh, investment banks is that they help largely with respect to negotiating a price so uh, you know if the price is high then you know how to talk to the clients in order to make the two buyers and sellers meet at one point so uh, they're expert negotiators as well so and and for that again they charge commission so a certain amount of commission 1% 2% just as an example can be understood from the point of view of investment banking so in a nutshell think about a property broker and the property brokers role is just to kind of you know help the buyers and the sellers uh, identify and uh, in between property brokers actually add a lot of value by helping the, the buyers search uh, as well as the sellers also uh, uh, to identify the buyers so they are uh, they're adding a lot of value in between so likewise investment banking also does the same uh, while uh, the companies are looking for raising funds or uh, you know they're looking at mergers and acquisition activities so investment banks do many other things as well so we will discuss all of these in our following lectures I now hope that uh, you are able to kind of appreciate the difference between what is an investment bank and what is a commercial bank